Ah, this is great. A little bench right by the water so I can see the tide come in and out. I can feel the wind in the trees and I can listen to the birds sing. And most importantly, I can just take a break from the cabin renovations. This last little while, it's gone pretty good. I've made a lot of progress, but I've had at least one major setback. But it didn't start off that way. I mean, at the beginning of this segment, all I had to do was make one decision. Now, one decision I've been waffling on for the last little bit is how to divide up these three small rooms. There's the one here, just as you come in the front door. There's a middle one, and there's one in that corner. And I just took out this wall. I had to take out at least one wall, or take the covering off it and see what was behind it. And this opens things up. It's, it's a lot easier to see when there's not a wall blocking you in between. So if theoretically this is the bigger room and that's the smaller room, I can, I can now see it and, and I like it. And when I first put the idea of dividing the three rooms only into two, I did get a lot of feedback from my viewers and I greatly appreciate it. But the final decision kind of rested on several important details. Now, I know a lot of people had a difference of opinion. They thought that this room here would make a good bathroom because you come in front door and the bathroom's right there. Um, but I, I would challenge that. First of all, it is about four and a half feet wide by eight feet. You know, that's the size of a bar room pool table. Not a big area to... Uh, have a shower which a shower would take up probably this whole side and then you've only got enough room for a toilet and a little stand-up sink it's not a lot of room so placement of the bathroom to me depended on where the kitchen was going to be and that i'd already made up my mind on i wanted the kitchen in that front left area just by that little window because that was an area that had a lot of light and when I was cooking or having breakfast, I could just sit and have a coffee and look out at the waterfront. Now, the reason I wanted the bathroom very close to that kitchen is to reduce the plumbing. And because chances are the only place in the property I can put a septic tank is on that side, it makes more sense. I don't have to route any plumbing over to the middle of the cabin. So that kind of narrowed down my choices that the best location for both the kitchen and the toilet was on this side of the building with the bathroom being in the far corner. And uh, the other thing, uh, right over there in the other side of this wall is the stove. So having the bed right be like within a few feet of the stove, all I need to do is do a little venting and I get some of that heat heating up the uh, the bedroom as well so i think it's win-win i think that's the decision i gotta make a decision this wall comes out that wall stays and I'll, I'll deal with the bathroom later on however i think i can now do what i love to do destroy things that was easy Wall no more. Bedroom it is. After that dividing wall was gone, the bedroom started to take shape. Well, I'm almost done my patchwork. Uh, I've already sealed the door, the original door that was here. I'm not going to use that anymore. Now, the only big hole left is the attic. I used materials from prior demos, so it didn't cost me a cent. I made the decision to keep the old MDF wallboard, which meant I had to do a lot of patching, especially the holes from the outlets or switches that needed to be relocated.
Reusing the old MDF panels was good for the environment since I didn't have to dispose of the waste, but repairing it took a lot more effort. In order to fill in all those cracks and holes with spackle, I first had to cover the walls with primer. This took a long time with just a brush. Well, I think I at least got a good start on the bedroom. However, there were some other structural issues that I really had to look into. I've got to look at this doorway entrance as well because the frame needs a lot of work. The first problem with it is the top plate. There was only one and it was divided into three pieces, which is not good structurally at all. So what I've done is I put a second one in and I've staggered it for a little bit better support. Now the second problem is this header. Again, this is not good enough. I need a double header aligned the other way and that'll give good structural support. This is what it looked like originally and here's with the new reframing. There's an additional top plate, stronger headers, and better side support. And while I was at it, I also did the new bathroom doorway as well. A section of subfloor also needed attention as it was a little too soft right by the patio doors. Using a board as a guide, I cut off a strip right down to the joist and used a spare deck board to finish the repair. Now does anybody remember that cute dock spider that I found sunning himself by the deck in the last renovation video? Well it turns out he liked the cabin so much he actually moved inside to be its first resident and my pet. So I named him Boris. He is a big guy and proud of it so he posed by my tape measure to reveal his leg span of over three inches. When I found him in the rafters the next day I was curious why he was up there. So I think Boris the spider was only trying to help because he pointed out another support problem to me and that is evident right here. These center posts which are supposed to be connected to these lower cords are not. They're separated by about an inch. Uh, what they did is they put nails and just towed them in the side and that wasn't enough especially because in normal cases, trusses are not supposed to support anything but the roof. They're not supposed to be supporting anything underneath. However, when you add a lot more weight to those trusses, especially when you put in these big, heavy ceiling boards, then it is going to be bringing it down. And that's exactly what's happened here. Now, since I want to put more weight up here, there's only one solution. I need to install some beams. However, not everything went as planned, and at this point, things actually took a turn for the worse. I had no problem with the beam. I already had one because I salvaged it when I took off that back room. And there was no issue putting up the supports on one side because all I had to do is cut a little hole in the wall. The issue was the other side because in order to put the support for the beam there, I had to remove the wall boards. Now those wall boards have not been removed for decades. I wonder what's in there. Perhaps Boris knew what was up as he was already by the wall as I started to prepare. Was he perhaps pointing out another problem? I guess some wouldn't take on a project like this because they don't have the experience. But how would you plan on getting the experience unless you took on a job like this?
At first sight, everything looked fine, but on closer examination, I found some unwanted guests. Well, finding a colony of carpenter ants nesting in your wall is devastating. Ah, uh, that, that's just the worst news. I mean, what could be worse? Termites, I guess, but uh, carpenter ants aren't any nicer. And it was either the carpenter ants or it was me. I sprayed them down, vinegar and detergent, and they started dropping. Uh, I've got a lot of dead ants in here now. But I don't think the worst is necessarily over because that's only one panel. What's behind this one? I think there's only one way I can find out. Okay, good news or bad? Yeah, it's bad. Really bad. I had no choice but to uncover the entire wall. And with each section, it was more bad news. There seemed to be a separate colony every time with all the soldiers, workers, drones and the queen, and a lot of larvae. No longer relying on home remedies, I bought a proper bottle of insecticide. Although I love nature, this was an invasion. Okay, that was a little unexpected and unplanned for. I did not want to have to remove all the panels, all the insulation on this side, and, uh, and find out there's more ants than all the ants in Texas, I think. I have never seen so many ants. They were crawling all over but they had to go and they're gone and uh, now i've got a huge mess to clean up the panels are not salvageable they've uh, they've got to go to uh, the dump i guess which is unfortunate because there's no dump around here so it's uh, a lot of driving to do that as well as the insulation despite the setback i carried on with installing the beam after cutting out a space in what I now call the ant wall, I screwed on a temporary support underneath to take the weight. That made it easier to lift the beam to the spot on the closer side. The jack post and beam you see to the right of this shot was raising the sunken joist out of the way. I moved the jack post to support the new beam until I added and secured the support studs. It still needs a lot of nails and a couple of strap ties on the top plates, but at least the beam's in place and I can take a break. And the only thing I have to do is salvage a few nails from the pile. I did pull out a lot of nails, as you can see. So after cleaning up a few rusty nails and a lot of dead ants, it kind of dawned on me that this could be really, really serious. And uh, it could be a turning point in this renovation because if it turns out that the entire cabin is completely infested with carpenter ants and they're gnawing at it and ripping it apart, then what's the point of doing anything further? And that would be sad because I've spent a lot of time in this and I've spent a lot of money, let's face it. My money, by the way, I, I never used any donations for this. Uh, I did use the advertising revenue, but no donations. I, this is all on, on my bank account, but still, that would be a lot of time wasted. So where do I go now? Well, I think I got to assess the situation. I think I got to check out the other walls and see what's going on in there. Do a little research 
but I think I need to take a break as well. I think I'm gonna do a little camping next week, think about it, come back with a fresh perspective, and tackle it. See what happens. I don't know. I hope you stay tuned, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my others as well.